This is about picking, harvesting and selling as well. So the, the side of homemakers you haven't seen a lot of, which is actually how I <laughs> sell some of the produce we grow. It's a kind of strange market garden here because it's also about filming, teaching, writing. So not everything we do is full-on market gardening but there is a market gardening strand to homemakers and like this morning I'm picking these salad leaves for then mixing and washing and putting it into salad bags which we sell and you'll see that process and also we harvest some vegetables you'll see that and for selling to like in boxes to restaurant. So just covering that whole side of things is interesting. The particularly this salad pick that I'm doing, this is the main the main sale at homemakers. And taking off outer leaves of lettuce like this is the method I've developed. It works really well for regular and repeat harvest. So this this is a Friday morning it's the main picking morning of the week for salad. We do two a week actually, Tuesday as well. Now this is the biggest one for the weekend. And yeah, enjoy having a look.
Charles said they take a while to ripen these ones. It's, like a, it's very easy to pick from that. Yeah, it's, it's like gold is pretty straightforward, isn't it? That's nice. Wow, that's much Next. That's nice. Uh, you know, we don't have so much rain. We have enough. So, we the feeling of this. So, um, these carrots are going to the local spa in Bruton. And <laughs> these are carrots which would not qualify for selling to the supermarket in that they, you can see they're not even the. Some of them are actually even too long to go in the punnet, so we'll eat them. So there's a certain amount of grading going on here. Um, but what I'm finding is that people are keen to have these because they, I guess, because they taste so good. They are really sweet. And so I am tapping a little bit into the market for quality that you can't buy elsewhere. Having said that, you know, the Something like these carrots, they, they're not really that profitable, not compared to, say, um, leaf crop. And I'm putting a, around just over 400 grams, about a pound of carrots in each punnet, and I'm selling that for one pound. So that's a good deal for whoever buys it, I think. Uh, but back in the 80s, when I was doing this more larger scale and full-on commercial i was in those days boxes was a new and exciting way of selling veg so um, i was one of the pioneers of that and at one point we're selling as many as 100, 100 boxes a week to um, individuals who ordered them and that was it was true boxes it was whatever is in season basically is what they got in their box there was and there was no internet back in the 80s so they they couldn't go online and vary it or anything they just and it was always a surprise and i got the impression you know people quite like that actually but it, it was the first time this way of selling had really happened much and um, so it was kind of new and exciting and <clears throat> that has evolved now i think into more csas where people sign up for a share of produce through the whole season and that gives the grower a certain income a, a, a known income and they can budget and do their planning and again that's good for both parties all being well if you find a good grower and the grower finds good customers it can be a very um, very good way to both to buy and to sell produce as opposed to what I'm doing here which is selling to a shop but what I find is that say selling to the spa you need a relationship with the buyer, so we get on well. I've known Phil for more than 20 years, and we kind of understand each other. We know where we're both coming from. I know roughly what he wants. <laughs> he knows roughly what I can grow and what's worth growing. And, you know, he's prepared to adapt to that. You definitely need that. He can't just... Growing is not like producing stuff in a factory. You've got to have some understanding on both sides and acknowledgement of weather difficulties and all that kind of thing how long it might take to harvest and so on and so as a grower you've got to be good at 
getting your continuity and not having any gaps or breaks in, in the supply that, of whatever you're offering. It's like there's no way you could sell 20 punnets of carrots one week and none the next. Because um, what's your buyer going to do? They're going to go elsewhere if you haven't got any suddenly. No music. No dig music. <laughs> <laughs> no dig and cheek? Have you ever heard that? No. Have you heard them, Justin? Or have you heard Especially of no dig and cheek? What's that? No dig and cheek? I've never heard that expression. Oh, it's a, it's a rock band or a rap band. No diggity. Yeah. In tribute to No Dig. No, not at all. <laughs> 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 Working with workhorses. What horses? They're farming oh, horses? with workhorses. Ah, yeah. They are the mark. Monkeys, aren't monkeys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, if you, if you keep it reasonably simple, so you're not, um, not growing too many different crops, uh, mm -hmm. then that makes managing it easier. I mean, like onions here, for example, we use it now to plant it. They always mature about now, so you know that you have to plant clear by August at least. Just ideas. Yeah, they do things that work. And so I'm, I have a feeling they are kind of conscious of, of a little deeper meaning of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I think it's doing it. Have you got much information from back home? The, the historical weather records no, where you're growing? Not, not really historical, but I now try this year to, to record more. You can find it on the internet though, can't yeah. you? That kind of information. Yeah, I've got a lot of records. You could probably remember pretty well though, as well, year by year. Well, yes and no, it's surprising yeah. actually. It's the same yeah. as the weather, I've got you know, pretty precise weather records. Yeah. And as soon as I look at them yeah. and compare them with how I'm remembering it, I realise. <laughs> How fallible the memory can be. Yeah, that's a really good point. I started supplying a local shop with cucumbers last year for the first time. And at first they were dubious because I, 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 I wanted, I need a pound to make it, you know, half worthwhile even a pound per cucumber. These are quite big long ones and they balked at that because they were buying them for 70p I think it was and selling them for a pound. So they okay they agreed right we'll pay you a pound and we'll sell them for one pound thirty. So they weren't making much margin and lo and behold they sold. Their, their customers raved about the flavour and they were saying things like we had forgotten what cucumbers taste like. So for example, we're talking about cucumbers like this. And you can see again, that, <laughs> that wouldn't cut it in the supermarket. It's got slight curving. I'm grading out though ones like that. So that one I, I wouldn't put on the, sh or expect anyone to put on a shelf. Although there's obviously nothing wrong with it, but most people are not used to buying a cucumber like that. Uh, but we can eat those. There's, there's usually not too many of them. There's, if you can grow them well enough that you get most of them fairly straight and decent size. And so that's what I'm selling for a pound. And that's just about worth it <laughs> for the working ball. Um, yeah, and I'm taking the stems down a bit as well so that then you can see more clearly the new shoots coming the next time from below. I'll not leave too many long stems on the top. And then um, what I'm going to do now is grade, pun it up some French beans. And what I'm doing here is mixing the green and the yellow so we've got 
some green ones, Cupidon. Basically I'm growing both and then I put a mixture in the punnet and the feedback has been pretty positive. People like, um, seem to like that. It looks very pretty on the plate. The flavor is slightly different. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of unique a bit. I don't think you'd buy a punnet of beans like this in a supermarket and certainly not as fresh, I wouldn't think. And that's only going to be around 200 grams. So it's a, it's a bit of a luxury product. And then I slip a rubber band over the top. So <clears throat> this is real minimal packaging because I think, you know, people in the supermarket probably look to have a plastic seal over the top of that, but I find this can work. And yeah, people do like that if you can get genuine recyclable packaging. It's just that it's possible for beans and carrots, but very difficult for something like salad leaves. Um, yeah, so basically I've got three crates here. Three piles of three crates and each pile has the same proportion of all the different things we've picked <laughs> in most of this. And um, now it's just a question of mixing them. They just put them on the table. I mean, you could just go over the top. And you just stay outside. Yeah. <laughs> 